Well, it's good to welcome you this evening to Our Lady's Cathedral for our annual Sanctity of Life Mass. Those who are here present within us in our beautiful cathedral, but also those who are participating via live stream and parishes around the archdiocese and perhaps in homes as well. We come together this evening to bear witness to the sanctity of life, to the dignity, the goodness, the holiness of each and every human life. In the gospel that we just heard proclaimed, Jesus proclaims a logic that is not accord in accordance with the way the world normally thinks and judges and evaluates and measures things. He speaks in the gospel today of the man who has a hundred sheep in the field and one of them wanders away and gets lost and uh, poses the question, would the man, the shepherd, stay with the sheep that are safe or would he go out in search of the, the one lost sheep? I suppose the way the world judges things very often, we'd say, well, let's cut our losses and stay with the 99 who are safe rather than put them at risk in any way and going after and searching for the one which is lost. But that's not the way the Lord judges. That's not God's wisdom. The good shepherd goes off in search of the lost sheep. And as we hear in another gospel, when he finds it, he lifts it up on his shoulders and with rejoicing brings it back to the fold. Because in God's eyes, each and every sheep or lamb is precious. Each one is beloved. Each one has value. Each one has dignity. This is the way God judges. So Pope Francis has often spoken very critically of our Western secular culture that has lost its sense of God and in losing a sense of God has lost its sense of the dignity of life, the value of life. He critiques Western culture as a throwaway culture in which it's easy to dispose of not only things, but of people. Whether it is the person who is locked away and visible to us because they are incarcerated, or the aged or infirm person who is alone in a nursing home, out of sight, out of mind. Maybe it's the person with disabilities. Maybe it's the person who is dying alone with COVID. Out of sight, out of mind. We can anesthetize ourselves and our consciences so easily in our culture, which values and places emphasis on things rather than on people. But that's not God's ways. And that's what we are bearing witness to this evening and every year when we gather for this Sanctity of Life Mass, that every life has value. There is no such thing as a throwaway in God's estimation. Everyone was created by God out of love, chosen by God out of love, intended by God because God loves us. We hear in the first reading today from the book of Genesis, the account of creation, part of the account of creation, in which we are given to meditate on the fact, a very fundamental fact, of our creaturehood, that we are creatures, that we cannot account for ourselves, that our lives are contingent. We are here because of God, ultimately. It is God who has created us. God who has created us for a purpose, God who has created us with a destiny, a God who loves us, who doesn't turn his back on us. And even when we sinned and rebelled against God, God doesn't give up on us as we might. 
But God begins to unfold his plan of redemption and salvation through the history of the patriarchs and the prophets, a promise of salvation, a promise of a redeemer, and ultimately sending his own son, the word of God, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, who takes human flesh, who becomes one of us, who who becomes vulnerable and small. He enters the world as the child of a mother, a human mother, in the womb of Mary of Nazareth. God loves us so much that he chooses to take on our contingency, our vulnerability, our fragility, our mortality, in order to redeem us, in order to restore us. He goes off in search of the lost sheep, giving himself, giving his all in obedience to the Father's will, laying down his life in a most shameful and humiliating way, condemned as a criminal, innocent though he was, taking our guilt upon himself. And when he has suffered death, goes down into the realms of death. He descends into hell, taking the full weight of human misery upon himself in order to redeem us, and in order to lead us back to life. Every life has dignity. Every life has value. Every life is precious in God's sight. That's what we are bearing witness to this evening, the dignity of life, a dignity that is rooted in the fact that we are created by God, not just as all of the other creatures that we hear about in the account of creation, the sun and the moon and the stars, as good as they are, and they are very good, or even as the fish of the sea or the birds of the air or the the wild or even the domesticated animals, which are good, But God creates us uniquely in his own image and likeness, and he looks upon us with delight and with pleasure and declares us to be very good, created in his image and likeness. That's what we are celebrating today. That dignity that comes to us from God because we are creatures created by God in his image and likeness a dignity that is bestowed on us by God himself that cannot be taken away from us. It's not a dignity that has been bestowed upon us by a state, by a government, even by our parents. It comes from God and God alone. That's what we testify to this evening. The source of our dignity is in God, in whose image and likeness we are formed and created. It's the foundation of our Catholic social teaching that we are created in God's image and likeness, that we have a dignity that is inalienable, that we cannot forfeit. It's a dignity that perhaps it's especially evident when we consider the innocent, especially the innocent unborn. But it's a dignity that's also in those that are considered throwaways often in our culture and society the poor, the vulnerable, the homeless that we see and pass so often on our street corners, part of the throwaway culture. And even those that we never see because they are locked away in prisons or even on death row, they have not forfeited their dignity, even if they have committed heinous crimes. We are called to bear witness to the sanctity of every human life from conception to natural death. I've been speaking out rather regularly of late on behalf of the startling rise in the number of federal death penalty executions that have taken place over the course of the last year. In the last year, more people were executed in the United States by the federal government than by all 50 states combined. More people 
executed by the federal government than in the last 63 years. We bear witness to the fact that even those who are guilty of heinous crimes do not forfeit the sanctity and the dignity of their life because God has sent his son to redeem us. God never gives up on us and we hold out the hope for the possibility of repentance and conversion until the very end. Today we witnessed in one way, shape, or form, the inauguration of the 46th president of this great country, the United States of America. We witnessed today in the inauguration of Joseph Biden, the election and inauguration of only the second president of these United States, who is a member of our church, who is a Catholic. And immediately, we are pre presented with challenges and opportunities. There are certainly opportunities that we witness as we, as we celebrate the inauguration of President Biden. We think there's probably opportunity for us to work with him on certain very fundamental issues regarding the sanctity of life, particularly around the death penalty, particularly around health care, the ability to deliver health care perhaps more effectively, more broadly, to people who are in need of life-saving remedies. We are hopeful that perhaps this presidency will give us an opportunity to work with the administration and with Congress to work out the sticky problems that we have wrestled with for the last 20 years around immigration and perhaps finally resolve the problem of undocumented immigrants in our country, providing them with a pathway to legal residency and perhaps even citizenship in our country. These are opportunities that we are being offered in this new administration. But the day after tomorrow, we will observe the anniversary of the Supreme Court decision, Roe versus Wade, which legalized abortion in our country, virtually without restrictions. Our national shame, if not our country's original sin, a euphemism that is often attributed to slavery, rightfully so, but certainly our national shame that every year over a million innocent unborn children are sacrificed very often on the altar of convenience, the most innocent and vulnerable of all through abortion. This must stop. God is patient. God looks upon us with mercy, but we dare not tempt God. We dare not presume on his mercy. It is incumbent upon all of us to work together as advocates for the sanctity of every human life, but in a particular way for the sanctity and the protection of the innocent unborn. This is our challenge. This is the challenge that this new administration will face, that they cannot avoid, especially since our new president who has pledged to work together with all people for unity and reconciliation in our badly divided nation, is himself a Catholic, a mass-going Catholic, a man of faith. We need to pray for President Biden. He is obviously a good man, but by his policies and his promises, to lift restrictions on abortion. He obviously has blind spots in his Catholic conscience. We need to work with him. We need to pray for him every day. This is our challenge as Catholics. He is one of our own. Let's not write him off 
because God doesn't write anybody off. There's real opportunity here as we mark the inauguration of the second president of these great United States who shares our Catholic faith. Let's pray that the Lord would strengthen him and give him the courage and grace that he needs to move against the tide of popular culture and those to whom he might be beholden because of political promises, that his eyes and his heart will be opened, his conscience will be enlightened, and that he will be strengthened to act with justice, to protect and defend every human life from conception until natural death. May God continue to bless our nation. May God continue to heal our divisions, many though they are here in this nation. May he deliver us from this global pandemic of coronavirus and give the grace and strength to our legislators and our president to resolve these sizable challenges but especially to give them the grace and the strength to protect the most innocent and vulnerable in our midst. As we hear in the gospel, Jesus takes the little one who is the greatest among you, his disciples, or he asks and is this, he responds to the question, it is the least, it is the little one in your midst. Let us pray that the Lord would give the courage to all of us to speak up and advocate on behalf of the most vulnerable and innocent, the poor, the voiceless, that their dignity, dignity might be recognized, affirmed, and protected in law and in practice. May God bless each of us and bless our nation as we continue to advocate for the strength of those who govern us, that God might give them wisdom and courage and the grace of repentance and conversion as we pray for each one of us. All of us have blind spots. All of us stand in need of repentance and conversion. God doesn't give up on any of us, and so we don't give up on anyone either. May God continue to bless you and bless our great nation bless our new president and his administration. May they truly work together to champion human dignity and human justice, especially the lives of the most innocent and vulnerable and most forgotten. God bless you.